right now we are so pleased to be joined uh, by one of the new faces of LSU football. It is OC Coach Mike Denbrock, also uh, tight ends coach. Uh, coach Denbrock, thank you so much for joining us, man. Honored to be here and uh, excited for uh, not only that it's Friday and it's the weekend. Hey, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> so we're getting closer to football season, so it's uh, an exciting time. It it is. Um, I mean, how far are we? We're under what? We're like probably what sixty, seventy days away. Fifty nine. Fifty nine days. Nice job, Mario, being on top of it there. So less than two months to go, Coach. And I can only imagine. You know, for for a lot of people, you're like two months. That's a lot of time to get whatever you need to be done. But I, I imagine since you've gotten this job, pretty much everything has just felt like a whirlwind. It really has. I mean, uh, it's. Uh... You know, two months seems like a long time to uh, kind of prepare a team and kind of get ready to go. But uh, the anxiety level uh, yep. that I'm feeling uh, at this point is uh, rising every day as the as the countdown clock goes. And, you know, we've, we've got a lot of work to do in fall camp. You know, we're trying to make some progress here over the summer months and uh, push this thing a little farther down the road. The kids are doing a really good job of, of kind of working out on their own here in July mm -hmm. um, since we kind of you know, we're on uh, a little bit of in and out of the office on vacation a little bit here and there. But, uh, you know, we're excited for what lies ahead. And uh, I think we've got a good group that uh, is anxious to work and, and show what they're capable of doing. I mean, June and July, I know at least when T-Bob and I were playing, I mean, those were kind of months that as far as the coaches, you didn't do as much as you're doing now. I mean, June is slam packed. You got official visits all over the place and yeah. you're still working. It seems like every day in the office, I know for – for us, like in July, you really didn't see the coaches. In fact, no. you didn't see the coaches really all summer long. But well, you weren't allowed to have a you weren't allowed either. to have it. But now, I mean, June and July are incredibly busy for y'all. Yeah, they are. I mean, we get it in in June in particular. We get a couple uh, hours a week, depending on lifting schedule mm -hmm. and conditioning and all that kind of stuff. We get a couple hours a week of football time, which is welcome. Um, I wish they'd open that up a little bit more because yeah. you know how we are <laughs> as coaches. We love to occupy your time yeah, as yeah. much as we possibly can. So. Uh, and keep you out of harm's way if we uh, keep you in a meeting right. room. Yep, so yep, yep, uh, yep. we've been able to do a little bit with that in, um, you know, help the, help the knowledge standpoint and dig in a little bit deeper in some of the details that maybe you didn't get to in spring football that you wanted yep. to and, and, then the, and let the players kind of run with it. And what we're trying to do right now is just foster as much leadership amongst the group as we can, uh, let those guys get out there and kind of run the thing themselves and, uh, and see where it goes. How difficult is leadership when you do have a quarterback battle, when you have multiple quarterbacks in that quarterback battle? I mean, can it be from other guys? Do you kind of look for that maybe in part of the quarterback battle, see who the guys are gravitating towards? Yeah, I think that's a piece of it for sure. And, and obviously everything is going to run through the quarterback. I mean, that's right. the leader of your group, um, as you guys very well uh, know that more than anybody else out there. But uh, I think along with that, other positions – uh, not just waiting on the quarterback to to show leadership, but mm. uh, other positions kind of taking that mantle up and running with the flag and and uh, and showing that listen, uh, you're going to be able to lean on us and we're going to do things the right way too, and and uh, we're part of this whole deal as we go. Well, and uh, okay, so that kind of leads me into uh, the quarterback question, right? Which you know, I'm sure you're uh, so uh, continually happy to answer, but but I mean, <laughs> look, it's 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 an interesting situation where. Here at LSU, while recently there have certainly been some very high highs, um, this is, over the past 15 years, not been a place where quarterbacks have exactly come to thrive. Now, that has started to change, and right now, LSU's quarterback room is, I mean, we were talking, what, probably the best ever been since, like, 2007. So, as a coach, as you're grading this battle, going into camp and everything, kind of what are the separating factors that you're looking for that's going to decide who wins this thing? Well, I think there's a number of things. I think, you know, first off, it's, you know, who is comfortable in the role of being the quarterback at LSU? And it's not the easiest job in the world, yeah. as, as we all know. And, and to kind of be the guy who feels comfortable in the spotlight, who is somebody that everybody's looking to and, and leaning on uh, to make that play, to, uh, you know, make the check that needs to be made or, or do the things that need to be made, I think that's a, that's a big piece of it. Uh, being, being comfortable in their own skin, if you will, and uh, not being afraid of the big moment. Yeah, I, I think beyond that, it becomes, you know, who picks up the offense the best. And, you know, we're really best offensively when the quarterback is kind of controlling the keys to the Ferrari, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he's the guy that kind of 
can adjust it from, from time to time, and, and we love to give them the freedom to do that if, if they've earned it. Um, I think next it's, it's obviously based off of what we are personnel-wise, who kind of fits that the best. And, and that's, that's going to be an interesting, I think, uh, dynamic going into fall camp um, because I think we run a system that's versatile enough to fit a number of guys in that room, um, and we've got to figure out as quickly as we can uh, what makes our football team the most effective? Well, and 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 so you speak on running the system. I guess uh, from you, you've been at this for a long time in terms of developing offenses, calling plays, coaching them. Um, over the years, how has your philosophy developed in terms of okay, this is what I know I want to do versus this is what I believe my personnel is capable of doing. Like, how do you manage that kind of push and pull? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it starts with a philosophy, whatever your philosophy happens to be. And I, I'm kind of built, um, you know, from the offensive line out. And uh, it kind of starts there. I think that sort of physical toughness and in, in, in the game being played there um, at a very high level is really, really important. Um, so philosophy wise, you know, running the football, being aggressive with, with the way that you play the game up front, uh, is very, very important. And then as, as explosive as we can be forcing the football down the field, just from a philosophy standpoint, uh, we want to put stress, uh, both vertically and horizontally on every defense that we play against and, and force them to defend the entire football field. And then I think you take that philosophy, you look at the players that you have in front of you and say, all right, how does... How does what we want to do fit with the personnel that we have? Yeah. And whatever adjustments need to be made need to be made on the coaching end, not not on the player end. The players are what we've got and who we've got, and we've got to make sure that we're giving them the best opportunities. All right, speaking of physicality, Coach, how do you feel about fullbacks? Huh. I love fullbacks. Okay. Uh, you know, right. we, we kind of have dwarfed into a little bit more of, <laughs> of using a tight end a little bit more yeah, in that yeah, role no, these uh, days. Uh, oh, but, you don't have to nice, but Coach. Listen, no, no, Coach, listen, coach in the NFL, <laughs> those guys hated it. Every time they, be, they, they get mad at me, I'm like, I didn't tell you to play fullback. You're like, I signed up to play tight end. <laughs> well, I, I can, uh, you know, the uh, the days, unfortunately, of the double neck roll yeah. uh, fullback aren't aren't as prevalent as they used to be. Uh, but uh, that's right. there, that's right. there's a, still a, a big a big warm spot yeah. in my heart for guys that'll bash it up in there. Well, that that makes me happy enough, right there. I, I did want to ask you a question, not even about the quarterback battle, as far as who's in it and maybe what you're looking for, but what about a timeline? Okay, you go into fall camp, you've got four guys that are really talented. Is it after week one, we want to be here with this amount of guys? After week two, we want to cut down to two. Do you have a timeline of when you're looking to try to narrow it down a little bit? Well, definitely. I mean, I, I think we've got to get it moving. Yeah. Um, you know, is that a week? Is that a week and a half? Is, you know, is somebody really stepping to the front? You know, is somebody taking uh, the opportunities that they had in the spring uh, gain more knowledge of the position, more film study, more digging in, and, and kind of separated themselves a little bit uh, throughout the summer, even though the coaches weren't with them all the time. You know, how, what does that look like? And um, who kind of, as we said earlier, is ready to step to the front and, uh, and be that dude? Uh, we'll continue with Coach Denbrock next here on OTB. Uh, so pumped up to be sitting down with Coach Mike Denbrock here on uh, Off the Bench. Of course, LSU's OC, tight ends coach as well. Coach Insminger, another OC tight ends coach, right? I mean, there we go. We love those guys. Coach, I want to ask you about your personal experience uh, the last few years. Obviously, um, being o OC at Notre Dame and associate head coach over there and then going to Cincinnati for the last few years and really, like, helping – in a crucial way to bring that program to even further prominence, really the national stage. And now returning to kind of one of the more traditional blue bloods, like how, how do you feel you've kind of learned and grown over the last few years? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it was obviously, you know, you're at a place like LSU, uh, you're at a place like Notre Dame. Uh, those places are hard to say, I, I need to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. But um, you know, there, it was an opportunity for me to, kind of go do my own thing offensively, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Um, you know, and I felt like I needed that for me, um, for my career, for an opportunity to kind of grow my knowledge, uh, mm -hmm. grow my understanding and continue to, you know, I've always been a guy that's kind of always tried to dig in and, and find the faults in what I'm doing and try to correct them yeah. <laughs> as much as I possibly can. And I just thought it was time for me to maybe break away a little bit um, from Notre Dame and kind of, 
get a chance to run my own show again and, and kind of put it more influence of what I felt like uh, I, I like to do and wanted to do into the offense that I was running. Yeah. Um, and that was the reason that I left. It, and it was a very, very difficult decision. Obviously, you know, Brian and I have a connection over the years. Uh, but I thought it was best in the moment. Um, and it ended up obviously working out pretty well yeah, with, so. with, with what we did football <laughs> yeah. wise in, uh, you know, but it was much more a credit to the kids in that program and in, in what Luke Fickle is building there than it was to me for sure. But I, I think the exciting part about it was it gave me some new perspective, I think on some of the basic things that Brian and I have always believed are important offensively and then maybe augment some of those things mm -hmm. with some things that, that I was able to maybe test out and do over the course of the last few years uh, to kind of refine myself a little bit more yeah, man. Um, and then get back into, uh, you know, the, the seat at the head of the table at a, at a program like LSU. Uh, every day I swear, and this isn't just, you know, for, for the fans out there or anything, like I, I wake up, I, I put on a, a polo and I go to the office and it's kind of like, it just kind of hits me every time I walk in that building uh, what an honor it is to be part of this program. You mentioned you and Brian Kelly being together. Y'all have been together multiple times. It started at Grand Valley State. What is that relationship like? Because you said, look, I need to get away, need to do my own thing, and then you end up back with Brian Kelly. Y'all have a strong bond like that started at Grand Valley State. But just kind of walk us through maybe what that relationship has been like. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one that, you know, is, is built on, I think, mutual respect for each other, number one. And um, there's a friendship there, but there's also, I think, an, an understanding of what it takes to really win football games. And, yeah. and there's been, <clears throat> excuse me, such an alignment over the years with us as far as what it takes to be successful consistently um, and string wins together. And that's, that's kind of what I think has always drawn us back together. Uh, beyond the fact that, uh, you know, uh, he likes to get me on the golf course and try to take my money. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he in Tahoe right now? Is he playing in the fancy tournament? I know last year he was there. Did, did he go back again this year? Do you know? I'm not sure, and I don't think it's I, I don't think it, it, it's okay for me to disclose his whereabouts. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not exactly positive. So, uh, coach knows he's, he's in the office today. That's what Coach knows. <laughs> okay. How about this, Coach? Um, because it is interesting uh, being an OC and being a tight ends coach. Right? A lot of times you'll see a little QB OC kind of crossover there. Uh, so just ex explain to our listeners kind of what, what's some of the nature of that and does it – do you have to be a quarterback's coach to to be the OC? Yeah, I mean, I don't believe that you do. Obviously, I don't I do not do it from the quarterback position. I have done it yeah, uh, right. with coaching the quarterbacks. Um, you know, and I think uh, as long as you've got somebody in the quarterback chair – um, in that meeting room every day that you trust in, believe in, that believes in what you're doing and how you're doing it, uh, and can speak the same voice that you're speaking. I don't think it's necessary to absolutely, you got to be the coordinator from the quarterback position. I think from the tight end position, what it allows me to do is kind of dig my hands into all aspects of what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, the run game to me is as important a factor in that is anything in, no, in I like to coach. you know, that's being, a, <clears throat> being the offensive line coach and, and coach Dave, Brad Davis, I, I, I love him. He, he does such a great job with the guys and in, uh, but being the offensive line coach for a coordinator who is also got a little bit of offensive line background and may <laughs> think he knows a little bit more than he does, uh, isn't the easiest job right. in the world, but, uh, it gives me a chance to really, you know what I mean? I've, I've got some, some good understanding of run schemes and, and what we need to yeah. do and how we need to adjust it. Um, and then obviously the tight ends uh, are involved in the passing game as well. So, you know, with Coach Hankton and, and uh, you know, it, it gives me a chance to kind of work on that level as well and kind of have an overview of the whole deal. Yeah. And uh, so it's been – I think it's been really good. You know, it, tight ends has is, is been kind of where I kind of made my teeth in this business and, and helping develop those guys over the years. And then combining that with the ability to kind of have my foot in both worlds uh, and have an overview of everything that's going on, I think has been pretty successful. Coach, you have a style that you like as far as the running game. I was talking to an NFL scout not that long ago, and he said it's kind of tough to evaluate not only offensive linemen, but running backs because everyone in college runs inside, outside zone, and that's about it. There's no gap scheme runs and powers and counters. Do you have a philosophy that you like to stay with? Is it more the personnel maybe dictates some of that philosophy? 
No, I, I mean, I, I think from a f- philosophical standpoint in the run, you have to have a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. And, and you can't do too much. Uh, but if, you, if you're not a gap scheme team in some way, shape, or form, right. uh, if all the defensive line is being asked to do is just to play zone blocks, I, I don't know how effective you can be running mm-hmm. the football. Yeah. I, I think you've got to hit them at angles. You've got you to do different things to them to kind of keep them off balance a little bit. So you'll see a wide variety of different things that we're going to do with that. So it's like a microcosm of the philosophy you were talking about earlier, right? You want to stretch them horizontally. You want to stretch them vertically in terms of attacking, but also just within the line play as well. You obviously want to challenge them in, uh, in multiple different ways. 100%, yes. Um, what, are you, uh, what are you most excited for? football season man and i know you know, and I know I, you mentioned the word anxiety right? i've not that, even yeah. all these years that uh, i've been doing this and you can tell by the lack of hair it's been a few years <laughs> but uh i've never had an opportunity to to coach or or be on the sideline in tiger stadium and yeah. uh I, I just cannot wait for that first opportunity when it comes and uh and getting a chance to be in front of that crowd and uh and live that experience it's going to be awesome what about position group you're most excited to see if they continue to grow in fall camp I think right now I would probably point to the wide receiver group. I mean, I think that group has established itself throughout the spring as a really consistent bunch. Um, you know, I think we've got a number of different guys there depth-wise that can do different jobs. Yeah. Um, exploring that kind of in fall camp and, and kind of letting those guys kind of fight it out for, for who's going to be the marquee guy uh, I think is going to be a pretty – Pretty fun little uh, experiment here in fall camp and, and watching those guys kind of do what they do. And then, obviously, at that position, you get back one of the top players in the entire country that, uh, you know, it's like uh, it's like being a little kid on Christmas morning. I haven't even had a chance to open that present yet. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can't wait to uh, to get Key out there and, and see what he's doing. And uh, speaking of camp, right around the corner, uh, how do you approach it from a – like how competitive does it get between you and House and – Obviously, you all have assembled quite the all-star staff here. Uh, well, what are you expecting? Some fireworks come August? Oh, no question. I mean, I, <laughs> listen, I, I, you know, my great respect for Matt, obviously, and, and we have a great relationship. And, and it's always good. You know, coaches are, are incredibly competitive, as you guys know. And, uh, you know, those who can't play anymore, you know, sometimes coach. And that's what we ended up doing. But, uh, you know, you all, you've all got your plan going into practice. You know, you script it out and we're going to do this on this down. And, and then all of a sudden you get out on the practice field and all of a sudden, okay, that didn't look much like the script. Ah, that, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. you know, you know, if things are going, going really well for us, then uh, we get accused of changing the yes. scripts. And if things are going well for them, they get accused of changing the scripts. And pretty soon, the scripts are out the window, and it's uh, call it, and uh, let's go see who yeah, can win. You know, oh, the, sto- the stories we could tell about exactly yeah. exactly that. Real quick, last one for me, Coach. The running back position. Uh, is it one of those things where you're looking for maybe a bell cow and some supplementary pieces from the other guys? Or are you looking for, hey, we'll share the wealth? Because LSU is, is one of the places they've had – a lot of success having running back by committee. Yeah, one national sure. championships in 03, 07, play for another one in 11, running back by committee. In 19, they did have Clyde edwards Dealer, who was the bell cow. Uh, is that something you go in, you know, with this mindset or just let it happen organically? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's got to play itself out. I mean, we're going to let those guys decide uh, the amount of playing right. time that they get, quite frankly. And, and I would love for it to be one guy. I'd love for it to be three guys. Right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. However, that there's there's a lot of talent in that room. It's it's an exciting group to be around. I think there there's a lot of guys in that room that feel like they've got something to prove, which is always awesome from a coaching standpoint. Um, and we're going to give them an opportunity to show it in fall camp. And if somebody earns it and is clearly better, right? Um, you know, he'll be kind of the go-to guy. But um, if we have to do it by committee, we're certainly ready to do that. Coach Mike Dimbrock, uh, catch him on the field here in 59 days. Uh, so excited, man. Uh, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. Give you time. I know you're always very busy, especially nowadays at this time of year. So, again, we thank you. And, uh, yeah, look forward to doing it in the future. Anytime. Appreciate you guys having me. Yeah.